Greetings and welcome to Seasons, Greetings, and Grief. I am so excited that you've tuned in on tonight. As a reminder, the Seasons, Greetings, and Grief series is all about true stories of people who are navigating grief during the holidays. Tonight, I have a very special person with me, Allison Henderson Brooks, the Allison Henderson Brooks. She is a powerhouse um, in the faith community. We met in seminary and have stayed in contact throughout the years. And Allison has a very unique story um, of, of grief, um, especially during this holiday season of how she navigates it. So Allison, welcome. It's so good to see you. It is so good to see you and to be with you. I consider this all joy to oh. have some time to hang out uh, with season gre Seasons Greetings and, and, and Grief, which is your master child, and to be in your presence. And so uh, Kaya said that I am the, no, this is the Kaya Shears, Kaya Look. Ward Shears to be exact. And so Look. we thank God for this time and this space of grace and for community and friendship. So I'm grateful to be with you, sis. Amen. Amen. I appreciate that. Well, go ahead and tell us what, tell me about your story of grief. Let us all know what is, what was your story of grief or what is your story of grief? Absolutely. Well, I would just invite all of us to allow our minds to roll back like Walmart prices uh, to November of 2000. Uh, November 3rd, 2000 was when I uh, had my first up close and personal encounter with grief uh, with the passing of my father. I was a freshman uh, in college, never will forget it. I was at on the campus of Florida A&M University going to a Kappa party on a Monday night. And my father, I was like, yo, man, I've already talked to you today. Like, what is going on? Uh, I was slated to be home uh, that Saturday. I was coming home for the weekend. And uh, his tone and the tenor of his conversation was just different. And so there were a lot of long pauses. I was like, look, I'm about to go. My father was a Kappa. I said, look, I'm about to go to the Kappa party. I'll call you when I get back. And he said, Allison, he never calls me Allison. He said, be good, take care, and I'll see you later. And I said, okay, I'm gonna call you back. I'll call you back when I'm done. Now, usually he'll give the phone to my mom. I, I knew he was at home. I knew my mother was cooking dinner. Little did I know that I was the last person that he spoke to, uh, that four minutes later, he had a massive heart attack in the bedroom, in, in my parents' master bedroom while my mother was downstairs cooking cube steak, rice, and sweet peas. I have not had cube steak, rice, and sweet peas since uh, that day. That's one thing I still don't eat. Um, and, you know, he had gotten everything out. Uh, my father was all of 6'4". My mother was five foot feet nothing. Uh, my younger brother, my, we only have one brother, he was eight years old, and he didn't want to be a bother, but be good, take care, and I'll see you later. Uh, 2020 actually marks 20 years since I heard those words. Um, they were directed toward me, they were personal, and he knew that I was not going to be okay uh, if he did not make sure to circle back to talk to me. I'm a daddy's girl by, um, just by just my whole life. And so we'll fast forward to 2011, uh, November, August, my grandmother uh, passed away. Three months later, December 3rd, uh, my grandfather passed away. And 364 days later, my mother, uh, dad died November 3rd, uh, grandfather uh, started his transition November 30th. My mother, a year later, died November 30th. And so to be honest with you, uh, this marks eight years, right? Eight years of new beginnings. Grief never gets new. Um, it is something that sticks with you. I know people will tell you all the time that it gets easier, and that's a lie. Mm -hmm. That it gets lighter, that's a lie. Even when your mind doesn't remember, your body will remember. And for me, it triggers me like, why? what is going on? Like I'm sluggish. I don't want to get out of bed. And then you pick up your phone and you're like, oh, hmm, today's the anniversary. Um, and so for me, from October 1 until January, I am waiting on January 1 to get here every year. Um, one of the things that I told God, notice I said I told God, uh, was after uh, my mother passed away. So I will not preach in November and December. Uh, for the rest of my life. I told God that. God instantaneously was like, okay, I'm going to show you better than I can tell you. And for the past eight years, I have preached more sermons in November and December than I ever have. As a matter of fact, uh, I will preach too. Uh, I'll close out 2020. We're preaching for Samuel Whit Proctor and the Hamptons Ministers Conference. And it always comes just like that. 
is not on the schedule at the beginning of the year. Just what I'm like, I'm about to wind down and do whatever I need to do. God continues to gift me to say, no, you got a word. And it's going to come in November and December. And so uh, every year for the past eight years, as my mother has, uh, has gone on, I have preached on November 30th in some form or fashion. Um, I actually, I was 18 when my father passed away. Uh, he was, you know, big law enforcement here uh, in, the, in the state of Georgia. Also worked for the GBI as well. I preached his eulogy at 18 in front of 4,000 people. Uh, so I have also eulogized my grandmother my grandfather at my grandfather's funeral in 2011 i said well this is the last eulogy i'm doing and my mother looked at me knowing knowing that her time was not gonna be long said no because you got to do mine that's exactly what she said oh wow. and uh she said you got to do mine and you got to leave no doubt and so for me um when i think about grief I, they're inextricably tied to my parents the folks who gave me life and the way in which uh, I get through the holidays is remembering them, remembering their lives, remembering, uh, you know, as much fun that we had growing up and trying to replicate that. I will tell you that Thanksgiving for me is harder than Christmas. Uh, and so for the past eight years, uh, thank God for a husband and a family, uh, extended family. They live in New Jersey. I have gone to New Jersey for Thanksgiving. Uh, COVID, though. Uh, that thing hit differently because I couldn't travel. And so for the first time in eight years, I sat with the grief of losing my mother, the grief of being in Atlanta, the grief of being a mile away from her home, the grief of not being around the same table. That was our last meal that we cooked together. Uh, and I didn't know it either. And so um, how I deal with grief, I, I make sure, uh, not post um, but I live with their spirits. I live with their teachings. I cook in their same pans. I, uh, you know, try to do the same things that we did as, as a child, but it is difficult. It never goes away. It never gets lighter. Uh, but you learn something no, more about yourself. Uh, I'll never forget this, and I'll stop for, for the next question. Um, one of my favorite professors of Spelman, uh, when we were at the wake for my mom, it appeared that I was there by myself, but I really wasn't. Uh, I said, man, I just got to get through this. She came up to me, Dr. Donna Akiba Sullivan Harper, one of my favorite professors. She said, baby, you got a lot of more firsts to get through. And she said, it's not just the first Thanksgiving, the first Christmas, the first new. She said, every year there'll be a whole new set of new, the new job, the new house, you know, the new birthday for your child. So you always have news. And so if that's the first thing I can leave with you, death never gets easier because there's always something new that will bring, that will come up to you uh, and make you remember all over again, like it is a fresh. And so. Wow. See, you, have, you had on so many powerful like nuggets there. I'm like interview over. It's over. <laughs> you said everything. You've been on so many powerful nuggets. And I want to rewind to something that you said um, that I think really hits a lot of people. And I know for me, I, that was like my amen moment when you said, um, even if even if you uh, don't, even cognitively, if you're not thinking of it being mm -hmm. around the date, your body reminds you. That's right. I, your body reminds you. And it was recently the anniversary of my dad's death. And when I tell you, I had like a whole day at work. I drove an hour to work, hour, 15 minutes. To work, I set up my computer, had my emails all up. And at the end of the day, I couldn't say a full hearty thing that I had done. That's right. And I'm, I'm like Miss Productive. I got my checklist. I got That's everything right. coded, two calendars in my phone. Like, yeah. but I couldn't. And so, and then I was like, okay, okay. Yeah. It's week of the day. Okay, got yeah. it. And that's how my body responds. So when you said that, I was like, that's yeah. it. It will choke you. It will punch you in the stomach. And it will halt your forward movement. Yeah. Clock, like clockwork. Every year it's like, ooh, you know. Um, but I am reminded. I know people talk about, well, you know, does your mom ever come to see you? My mother only comes to see me when it's really bad. Like when I'm down, <laughs> uh, when I am not performing at my best, when I am not excellent, or when I feel like giving up. And it's interesting, uh, March the 15th, 2020, I, never, I, I will not forget this. Uh, mama came to me first time in eight years and she said, you better get yourself together and leave no doubt. So it was, and, and I was just like, what? what? And it was quick and it was what I needed to get out of bed uh, to keep on moving. I'll, I'll be transparent with you. Uh, so this is like first time I've ever shared this publicly, uh, but I am a COVID survivor. 
I had no idea that I had COVID, but I knew I was on my way out of here. Right. And um, I had started make, writing my obituary. Wow. And I just knew, I said, Lord, this breathing is just too tough. Just felt terrible. Wow. And my mother can get yourself together. Wow. And no doubt. And from that moment, I turned around. My mother has not come to visit me since then. And so I've sort of kept that right because being a COVID survivor is like a, as a stigma. You know what I mean? Right. Especially, you know, we're preachers. We preach all over. I've been preaching all over the country right. from my own home. But it's almost like I just knew that I was joining the ancestors yes. in March. <laughs> I, I just knew that the that the chariot was going to swing uh, around and come and get me. Huh? And uh, my mother was real clear, real start, get yourself together. And I got up for the first time in six weeks, got on my knees. I'm not, look, I'm, 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 I'm conservative Baptist. So I'm not known to talk in tongues. <laughs> I don't know what I said, but the ancestors of God <laughs> heard me. But uh, yeah, so uh, yeah. That is so powerful. That right there, yeah. that is really powerful. Now, let me ask you this, um, and I think it's so interesting that you said, like, especially that, that you, you had that experience when you were at your lowest, when you were at, your, at those points. Um, and let me ask you this, <laughs> when you get closer to the holidays, when you, when you get in, these, in, these, in, these, in this holiday season, some people you hear will say that the holidays are their lowest. Mm -hmm. They'll say that, that the holidays are their lowest. Do you, do you agree with that? Why or why not? Like there's some people who speak of their grief feeling heightened around the holidays. Do you yeah. agree with that? Why? Yeah, why? I do agree with that. But what I have come to grips with this year, so, you know, we have a son, he's nine years. It's not fair to him for me to be a zombie Thanksgiving and Christmas for the rest of his life. Uh, another interesting fact about us. Um, so my father and my uncle are 21 years apart. And, and my uncle and I are only four years apart. What? So in the span of one year, the, the patriarch of our family was 36 years old, right? Wow. And so we have, you know, no home to go to, no rootiness, right? We sold grandmama's home, sold my mom's home. And so you've got my sister and her family, uh, my uncle who is unmarried, doesn't have any children, he's 47 now. Uh, and then our family, like, what do we do? Somebody's got to pick up the mantle and say, yeah. okay, we're we doing this at, at, you know, at our house. Yeah. And so how do we create new memories? Yeah. And so uh, although they are sad, um, you know, I try to, just, again, just try to do the same things. Um, so the Hendersons in Peachtree City were known for our holiday parties. Okay. And to this day, uh, like clockwork, there is somebody, one of my parents, old friends are like, I was thinking about your parents. <laughs> <laughs> and we would be on our way to y'all's house for the, and my five, my parents bought Christmas presents for everybody that was invited. And so my job, my side hustle was that my dad didn't know how to rap. And so he paid me every year to wrap Christmas presents. I love it. And so I don't start wrapping Christmas presents until Christmas Eve because I remember being mad at having every, <laughs> oh, we forgot about so-and-so. Go to Kroger. She likes that fruitcake loaf. Goes to Kroger, gets the fruitcake loaf, and I got that, you know. Wow. So I, I sort of lean into that, and I do the same things. But yes, they are lowest. But I am grateful, and I am claiming that this year, in this eighth year, that it won't be as low but that there will be pockets of joy uh, because I do realize that I have to create memories for my son yeah. and for our family. So that, uh, that is just not the overarching loom yeah. of, of our time together. So, um, and it's funny. So my mother had amazing sayings like most black women, like, Look, it's always something. <laughs> and so my son actually said, you remember Nana used to say it's always something. I was like, Wow. Well, my nephews would mimic Nan they mimic Nana Steele, oldest one is 17, youngest <laughs> nephew is six. They remember mom, you know, and they remember our grandparents. And so uh, that's how we keep them alive. So yes, yes and no. Yes, it is it heightens your yes. sadness, but I do believe that it is incumbent upon us to keep moving forward. Yeah. And you not, not to dismiss, right. but to, to move forward and find those pockets of joy amidst the times of sadness. So yes. Absolutely. And I believe you, you, you hinted on it. And I, one of the questions I was going to ask are, are there any traditions that you and your family do specifically to honor your loved ones, specifically to honor your parents? Sure. So it's always about food. So my grandfather was an Epicurean chef. 
Uh, oh. My sister has taken that on. I mean, she will come up with some random menus. We're like, girl, it's Christmas. <laughs> but um, so one one main memory is uh, my parents and grandparents used to take us all to the mall. Uh, and they would give us $300 each. And we would have to buy gifts, like meaning for gifts for everybody. So we call ourselves the original seven. So before we had children or anything like that, they would take us to the mall and you could buy whatever you wanted for everybody else. And then on Christmas Eve, everybody could open a gift. And in our house, it wasn't the smallest gift that you opened. Uh -oh. It was the biggest gift that you opened on Christmas Eve. Oh, boy. Okay. And uh, we had corners. Now, my husband is Jamaican. He is not with all of the consumerism <laughs> <laughs> of Christmas. But I go, used to see my Christmas tree down. My son has a whole corner, just oh. like we had. And everybody would go to their corners, find their gifts. And then we would all be together. So we would all spend the night. And this ensued up until, woo. Uh, yeah, like eight years ago. So wherever we were in the world, we didn't care where you were working or what you had to do or who you were booed up with. You were going to be in my grandparents' home wow. on Christmas Eve with all your stuff. We were going to eat. We were going to laugh. We were going to play cards. Everybody was going to have to stand under the mistletoe. <laughs> Everybody was going to have to repeat their, their favorite Bible verse. Right. Come on. <laughs> your biggest gift. And you weren't going anywhere until the day after Christmas. So, wow. uh, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. I can't help but smile just imagining this. And I'm thinking about these little corners right now. And I oh, love- man. I mean, the corners were like <laughs> crazy. My husband's first Christmas being married, he was like, this is insane. I was Are like, you serious? Yeah. Oh. But until he found that my grandmother made him, it oh. wasn't a corner, it was a little space. <laughs> And he walked out of there with about 20 gifts, like new suits from Neiman Marcus. I mean, he was just like, oh, great. Uh, <laughs> so says, yeah, thanks for next, right. next year. Thanks for next year. Come on. I yeah. love it. I love we still it. Do that. We still do that today for our kids. Uh, you know, I have one son. My sister has four boys and my brother has a daughter. Okay. And so uh, we, we still do that. Once you get there on Christmas Eve, you're not leaving until the day after. I love that. And I love how that sense of family uh, still, it, it, if it, it continued, you know, even yeah. after your parents passing, it, yeah. it continued. And I absolutely love that. So here's a question. And so my last question for you on today is there's someone watching now, right? Mm -hmm. There's someone watching now who, who is experiencing grief. Mm -hmm. who is looking and they're saying, wow, I'm glad you can smile about it now. I'm glad you can laugh about it now, but my tears are coming out, right? There's someone looking like my tears are coming. This thing is real. We're, we're real close to Christmas and I don't know how I'm going to get through this thing. What do you offer to that person as someone who has experienced grief so, so deeply? Like, what do you offer to that person trying to navigate grief this holiday season? Sure. I'll, I'll offer what I just told a dear friend uh, whose mother passed away last week. Lean into your loss. Mm. There is no amount of time that can erase the length of time that your parents or your loved ones have been in your life. Mm. And you just have to lean into your loss. Feel what you feel. Uh, say uh, what you have to say. Uh, God is strong enough to answer and to hear your petitions and your questions. Mm -hmm. So ask God why. But then also in your asking God why, asking, ask God to show you uh, how you can continue to, to move. Um, one of the things that I've learned and I'll share it, I believe it because I have lived it, is that our parents and our loved ones never stop loving us. And they always, especially, I will say this, especially if you've lost your mother. Mothers are always mothers, no matter if they're in the earth realm or oh. the heavenly realm. They will come and see about you. Oh. They will come and pull your coattails because you will remember something that they have said when you know. So for me, it's a purse. I like pockets. I was like, you need to carry a purse. And I carry purses now because I get tired of my mother reminding me that I need to carry a purse. Um, but lean into that and then you cannot stop living. God still has you here for a reason and all of the goodness that they have given and instilled and, and modeled for you is for you. And so, um, you know, I, I believe in African traditions where we call on the ancestors, where we seek their presence and their guidance. And I'm also a beneficiary that they hear and they show up 
just to let us know that we are not alone. And so lean into your grief. Uh, do not put a limit on your loss, how long you should grieve. Don't think that every day is going to be better because there is no way um, that we can ever uh, rush the moment. And then finally live, don't miss your moment. Don't miss your moment to live. Don't miss your moment to experience your joy. Don't miss your, your moment to be with your family. If 2020 hasn't taught us anything, it's not just life is short, but 2020 has elevated and amplified that idiom to say life is too short. Yeah. Life is too short for you to sit in misery. Life is too short for you not to fulfill your dreams. Life is too short for you not to experience love and happiness. Life is too short for you to sit down on the legacy of the ones that have gone before you. And so um, don't miss your moment. And then uh, keep on looking to the hills. Um, you know, I feel a little preachery. Uh, I don't know why, but I guess it's just in me. It's, um, I never will forget, uh, old deacon and my home church used to say, it puts everything in perspective, no matter what we're, what we're going through. So as long as the sun keeps on rising in the morning, it reminds us that God is still in control. Mm -hmm. And as long as whatever we're going through can't stop the sun from rising, mm -hmm. it means that we can always get over something. And even in the middle of Advent, I'll share, uh, even, even when we're in this wilderness, this wilderness of grief, this wilderness of disruption, this wilderness of pandemic, this wilderness of virus and, and moral uh, efficacy fading right before our eyes, even now, the Bible says the word of God still comes in the wilderness. That's and the right. word of God that will come in your grieving wilderness is that God really will never leave you, nor forsake you, that's right? Like that's the word that that will still come. And so the challenge for us in this Advent season of expectation, of waiting, of grieving, all of that's tied together, tension and testimony. Yeah. Prepare your heart to hear from God in a different way in your grief. Prepare your body to feel, but also prepare for healing that will come one second at a time. Um, and so that's 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 what I have. That was like a three-part mini series all in one. I don't, I don't know how it came, but you know how that goes. I like it and it's so powerful. Wow. See, those of you watching, you see why I said the out the the Reverend Allison Henderson, but you see why I said it, right? Well, wow. mm -hmm. Allison, I cannot thank you enough for just taking time to come by and, and just reminding us of God's grace and God's provision and God's presence as a reminder to those who are watching. I do have a book, The Grace to Greed. There's a commercial that's about to come on after we pray, and it will um, highlight where you can buy the book in this season. If you are struggling with grief, um, mm -hmm. it is such a powerful reminder of God's provision and his provision and presence, making up words, provision yeah, yeah. and presence, um, yeah. even now, even in a season where you may be greeting. Well, before we close out, I do want to pray with you, so let's pray. Before you pray, don't, don't. Don't miss this moment. I don't want to miss this moment to, to encourage you and to those that are listening that your story is a tremendous story. And I am grateful to have had a front row seat of how you battle tremendous losses 17 weeks apart while still trying to get your Master of Divinity degree, never missed a class, came up with effective ways to be present that would be, um, you know, just, um, it's, Kaya, uh, Kaya was on Zoom before Zoom became Zoom, right? Uh, getting things done. And so I thank God for the ways in which you continue to persevere, the way in which you continue to, to carve out space for others that are grieving and how your word and your witness is not just a testimony to God, but it is a living testimony to your parents and the gifts that they have given you that still live on and make room and make ways for you to be all that God purposed for you to be and all that they knew that you would become. And so I just want to offer that to you as we remember your parents and your strife um, and your struggle, but also your testimony as you uh, carve out being a new mom this year, how you create memories for your family and your son. And so uh, peace be unto you always, sis. And thank you for being a leading lady, but also one that teaches us day by day what it means to come this far by faith. So I'm grateful for you. Wow, I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Allison. Thank you. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you right now, um, lifting up first and foremost your name and thanking you for being such a big and awesome God. Father, we certainly lift up those who are watching even now, God, who are experiencing grief in this season.
Even now, God, give them an increased sensitivity to feel your presence, to feel your protection, and even your provision. And we don't always understand, God. We don't always understand uh, the reason for every single thing that you do. But even in a season where some may be navigating that space of not understanding, help them still find trust in you. Help them still find faith in you, God. Even now, God, I ask that your love and arms would hold them close, hold them tight, God. Send peace where peace is needed, God. Send healing where healing is needed, because you mm. are the God of all things good. In Jesus' yeah. name we pray. Amen. Well, family, look, I love you. I thank you for tuning in. If you know somebody who is experiencing grief in this season who needs to see this, go ahead and DM them. Go ahead and share it. Go ahead and text it to them. Go ahead and send them to this page to watch it because in this season, we are providing a space for grief. We are providing a space for language around this important topic. Look, I love you. God loves you. Take care.